Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to answer the million dollar question. What is Docker container? All right, let's try to understand this with an actual example. So you are the almighty happy developer and you develop some code for your project in development environment and the runtime engine for your development environment is Python 3.8 and you are importing a couple of dependencies, uh, maybe requests, and maybe kitchen sink. And you also have a configuration file with the DNS service name and the database connection. So everything works great in the development environment. Then you move your code to the test environment. In the test environment, the runtime engine is Python 3.6. So one of your code dependency works, but the other one, maybe the kitchen sink one, breaks. And your configuration file, the format, it also works. So you are thinking, all right, I need to change the code a little bit. I guess that's okay. Then one fine day, your code gets moved into prod. So prod runtime engine generally is always behind. So in prod, your company is running Python 2.7. So there, both of your dependencies break, the configuration file breaks, and basically your code is crashing and burning at this point. <laughs> so you are thinking, why did I take this job? So at this point, there are two kinds of developers. No judgment here. One kind of developer says, hey, it worked fine in dev, it's not working in production, not my problem, it's the operations problem. The other kind of developers think, hmm, it works on my machine, it works on development environment, what if I can package whatever my code needs to run in any environment and then ship that whole package into production? So one of the developer who thought like this is Solomon Hikes, and that's how Docker container was born in 2013. So what is a container? A container is an atomic self-contained package of software that includes everything it needs to run. Code, runtime, libraries, packages, etc. Before we go further, lot of the folks are confused about the term Docker image versus container. So let's clear it up. So once you package your code, configuration, dependencies, and runtime engine, you create a Docker image, also known as container image. At this point, your application is not running. You just have the image of your application. And when you run the Docker image or container image, it creates a container. So let's understand the big picture. So this slide is very important. Make sure you understand the flow. So in the beginning, you have your app. Maybe it's written in Java or Python or any other language. And then we have this file called Docker file, which dockerizes your app. So this Docker file basically says, my application needs these dependencies, this configuration, this runtime. It also has a command to create the Docker image for your application. So once you have the Docker image, you have to save the Docker image somewhere. So that is called repository. So this is very similar to when you save your jar file for your Java application in a repository. So a couple of popular Docker image repository are Docker Hub and Elastic Container Registry. Then your Docker image gets deployed into container. So this is when your app starts running inside the container. So one thing to note at this point, you can really run your application as container in any platform that supports Docker. So one of the most popular platform to run your container is Kubernetes and Kubernetes has different flavors. So we of course has Amazon EKS, which is the most popular and we also have Google Kubernetes engine but since Kubernetes is open source, you can install Kubernetes on vanilla EC2s and run your container there. And that's not it. You can run into any Kubernetes cluster implementation, even on-prem. 
So this also comes up a lot in interviews and also this is important to understand. What is the difference between virtual machine such as EC2s versus containers? So containers and virtual machines have some similarity in resource isolation, but it functions differently. So virtual machines are an abstraction of physical hardware turning one server into many servers. The hypervisor allows multiple VMs to run on a single machine. But here, the VM has your application, uh, the libraries and runtimes, but it also has to have a guest operating system. And this guest operating system takes up tens of gigabytes of space. Also, this operating system can be slow to boot. So now, if we take a look into container, containers are an abstraction at the application layer that packages code and dependencies together. Multiple containers can run on the same machine and share the operating system kernel with other containers. So since in this case, we don't need to package up a guest operating system into our container, it takes way less space than your VM. So that's why even though the size of the underlying server is same for these two diagrams, I have put way more containers than the VM. So what are some of the advantages of Docker container? So since you are packaging everything you need to run your code, it is platform independent. It's truly build it once and run it anywhere. So let's go back to our sad developer. So instead of him just deploying the code in different environment with different runtime engines, now he got smarter. He packaged his code, his runtime engine, which is Python 3.8, his dependencies and any other necessary components into a Docker image. And that Docker image runs seamlessly in dev, test and production. So his life is great again. Okay, going back to the advantages of Docker container. Next advantage is better resource utilization. Since containers do not require a separate operating system, they use much less resources than VM. This makes it possible to run many more containers than VM on a single server. And since containers have a higher utilization level with regards to underlying hardware, you require less hardware resulting in a reduction of costs. Next advantage is application isolation. Although containers run on the same server, they are isolated from each other. If one application crashes, other containers will keep running flawlessly and won't experience any technical problems. This isolation also decreases security risks. If one application is hacked, or breached by malware, any negative effects will not spread to the other running containers. Containers are fast to create, replicate, or destroy. As mentioned before, containers are lightweight and start very, very quickly because they do not need an operating system boot. What this means is your application can scale very, very quickly. The last but not the least advantage is container orchestration problem is solved. There are many great container orchestrator available today in the market that does a lot of heavy lifting, allowing you to focus on the business. If you are liking this video, please check out my new EKS course in Udemy. The course goes over Kubernetes basics. It teaches you all the Kubernetes concepts you need to know to get started with EKS. No separate course needed. Then it goes over EKS basics, then logging and monitoring, then EKS advanced concepts, uh, then securing EKS, Fargate, deploying EKS with DevOps, and then real world EKS projects. This whole course is built based on my real world experience. So I go deep on areas that you will use in your actual real world projects. I'll give the discounted link below in the description. If you have any questions, comments you want to discuss uh, on this topic, 
uh, feel free to leave a comment below I generally answer to all my comments and if you like this video if you think this was helpful uh, click that like button smash it if that's something you are into and subscribe uh, I have a bunch of other technical videos deep dive discussions on AWS services and also I have videos on how I switched to my career from mainframe to the cloud all right guys and girls that's the video I'll see you guys and girls in the next video bye